Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the VDK Pioneer of the Nile. Uh, released by VDCO Knives, VDK Knives, whatever you'd like to say. Anyways, um, thank you very much to my buddies Frankie and Bud over at the Budshot IP channel for loading this little guy along. Let's do a little size comparison here. Uh, this is the Spyderco PM2, so you can see that the VDK here is uh, not a tiny knife, but at the same time, it's not absolutely huge-tacular either, to use the technical term. Right here is your Ontario Rat number 1, which is a little longer in the blade department. Here's your Rat number 2 which is a little shorter in the blade department. Here is your Spyderco Delica, as always, which you can't flick and I occasionally forget. There you go. So again, it's not a tiny knife, but it's also not a huge knife either. And oh, what the heck, right here is your um, Chris Reeve Knives Lodge Sebenza 21 in the Insingo blade. So there you go. Um, one thing to note is that this knife is actually a mid-tech knife that's being made, a small batch production, that's being made by Wee Knives. Uh, who is a Chinese company, but uh, it's being distributed by Vlad himself here in the States. And, uh, you know, they're making some really great mid-techs, We is. Um, their their mid-techs don't feature the stupid screws, which is the Achilles heel of Wii knives. And, well, I mean, the, the quality that they're cranking out is pretty excellent. And uh, VDK has some other interesting knives out there. The uh, Pharaoh is coming soon, the War Admiral. They're keeping up kind of a fun Egyptian theme, which I'm going to play with throughout this review. So anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the pioneer of the Nile. So, first off, on the good side, I actually love the carbon fiber here. Um, you know, it's a nice-looking carbon fiber. It's, it's real carbon fiber. It's sculpted well. You can even see some lines in it, I hope, very much. And, you know, it's just, it's a neat little touch. If that wasn't there, this knife would run the risk of being a very plain titanium thing. But this this is a really neat little touch. One other thing that I'll, I'll point out here is that when I first got this, I thought, oh, that's clever. He's using the carbon fiber as the over-travel stop. This has been done before and other knives, um, but what he's actually got, he's got a real over-travel stop underneath there, so this is entirely decorative, uh, which is kind of nice. One other thing is that this serves to hide the lock bar interface, which can very often be a bit of a hot spot on the knife, because you've got this little area here where there's kind of a right angle, and your finger rests right up against that. Here, your finger rests on the carbon fiber, which just serves to smooth that out. So this carbon fiber is multifunctional and multi-excellent, so that's nice. Next thing is the clip on this guy. This clip is good to go. It's sculpted, it's designed to fit the knife, but it, it's got enough spring to it, it's got enough room underneath it, it's on a smooth area. It's a fine clip, got some ramp to it, a-okay. No complaints there. The uh, steel on the knife is S35VN, which is absolutely good to go, and there are parts of this blade, I, this forward little tanto thing, I do like very much, especially with the kind of compound-ish grind. It's not quite there, but it, nonetheless, it's an interesting little grind, and so we'll talk about that a little more later, but still. I love the steel. There were nice parts of this blade here. Next thing is that the shape of this guy is actually very nice in the pocket because you can see here that the clip is right, kind of holding it like this, but the knife on the whole is relatively small. It doesn't have a huge, huge flip at tab, and the part of the knife that's up against your pocket is very smooth and straightforward and very narrow with the top, which means that this carries very nicely. Having this guy in my pocket, it's, it's not a small knife, and it's especially a little bit on the wide side, but it didn't bug me having this little guy in my pocket for the couple of days that I carried it. So that's a beautiful thing. I'm a big, big fan of the, uh, the, the arrangement of the knife because it just makes it sit really nicely in the pocket. So there you go. There were also some very nice details on this little guy. Um, like I mentioned, you got the separate over-travel stop in there. You've also got a nice little titanium backspacer with pretty nice milling, and the milling matches up rather nicely. It's it's done there. The um, handle on the whole, I'll see if I can show this off. Maybe it's not visible here, but there's actually sort of a, uh, you can see a little bit of tooling on there still, which just lends it a nice effect, and it's got a very, kind of a pretty warm satin effect on it, which is just nice. I like that very much. The uh, titanium is contoured. It's not just a flat piece. It is a full-on contour, and we can see that here as we're holding it there. 
The pivot screws are nice. They're not using stupid screws, which is beautiful. And uh, the, the carbon fiber, as I showed off in the disassembly, has little alignment posts, which means that, you know, when I first saw this, I was a little bit afraid that the only thing holding this carbon fiber in position was going to be the pivot. But those alignment posts really allow it to be on here pretty securely because it's held down by the pivot as well as by this contour as well as by those alignment things. Just that that's really, really nice. Um, It's got nice ergonomics in the hand. Um, You know, there's not a whole lot wrong here. The clip is maybe a little high, but honestly, clips are usually a bit of a problem. And uh, this feels pretty good. The roundness in the hand, the thickness of it, which, although it can be a little frustrating, is it makes this feel quite, quite nice overall. And then finally, and it's kind of a weird thing to have as the last part of the good, but it really did make me happy, is the lanyard tube and hole on this guy. There's not really a lanyard tube. A lot of knives dedicate a whole bunch of extra space to a lanyard hole. Or, you know, have something in the back specifically. Add something that looks a little bit, I don't know, less clean. On this guy, all you have is this little area where there's kind of a, a, a little cutout in the back spacer, and then there's a little tiny post here that you can wrap your lanyard around. It gives you lanyard access right at the very end of the knife, but if you don't use a lanyard, you never care that this is here, because otherwise this would just be a chunk of titanium. This is just a nicely done solution to giving lanyard guys a place to attach without actually, you know, adding more space to the knife and make it look any less clean. So that's just a beautiful thing to me. Um, and so that's what's good here is it's got a nice lanyard hole. The ergonomics are pretty damn good. The details are there. It's got a nice shape when you've got it in your pocket. The steel is nice. The clip is nice. Love the carbon fiber. And frankly, the, the, the handle is beautifully designed. Absolutely 100%. So let's talk about what's great here. So on the great side of this knife is the action. Absolutely. This knife is very, very nice in terms of action. It pops open reliably with a very nice detent. The flipping on this knife is great. It's got a hard detent but it, and a heavy blade, but it fires very nicely. There's really no concern about that 100%. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to use in the hand. Um, on the closing side, I, when I first got it, it was, you know, pretty damn good. It was a nice action, but after I cleaned it out, it has become a just beast of a drop shutty sort of knife. It's really, really nice in that way. It actually, I mean, you saw the disassembly. It blew me away when I was able to run this guy again without whatever little bit of grit or whatever had gotten up inside there. The action on this knife is A+. plus. It is a very, very, very nice action. Heavy blades make fall and shut a little bit easier, and this has a heavier blade than some, but nonetheless, as an action snob, I have zero to complain about here, and I've usually got something to complain about. The action is 100% done right, and that's probably the very best thing about this knife. So uh, let's talk about the back. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, I'm not a huge fan of the grind on the blade for a couple of reasons, but the first one is very personal and aesthetic. This knife, the back of it is very organic, it's very curvy, it's very flowing. The front of this knife is very straight liney. There's this nice flow in the back there, but then you've got this straight line curve across, and this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy. It just feels like the blade belongs to a slightly different knife than the handle does. Um, it's not the end of the world, certainly, and, you know, the grind is fine, but aesthetically, it seems to hit a very different note up here than it does here, and that, that doesn't quite add up to me. Um, that, that said, VDK, you said that there were more blade shapes coming for this guy, and I'm really curious to see what those are going to look like and whether they have a little bit less of that clash. But that's a, a little issue. Another thing is that the price is higher. Um, you're looking at 330 bucks. This action is really good, and, you know, the materials are nice, the design is nice. I'm okay with that price. It's not oh-my-god value by any stretch, but it is still a lot of money for a lot of people. So it's something you got to keep in mind here. Um, next thing, and this is perhaps a little bit more uh, esoteric to folks with smaller hands, but on a knife that has a flipper tab, generally the way that it works is that you use your index finger, and you press the knife back against the heel of your hand here. And so these fingers are just kind of supporting the knife, and then it, it fires. On this guy, because this little tip here is very small and it's relatively far away from the uh, from the flipper tab itself, in my smaller hands, this guy really wants to come flying loose, and so I find myself needing to, as I'm doing this flip, 
I can't rely on pushing against this little area because it wants the ramp back out of my hand. And so I find myself pinching harder here, which makes the intent harder. It's just a little bit strange. I'm sure this is not going to be an issue for people with bigger hands, but if you've got smaller hands, that's kind of a consideration for you. It works. I could still carry the knife. It presented no problem. But it's a little odd to me and something to keep in mind. Next thing on this guy, the balance on this knife is a little bit further back than I'd like to see it. Um, you're someplace in this department here, and on a knife that wants to be gripped like this, the balance just, it feels a little bit off. It's not the end of the world, it certainly works, but I feel like this needs to be a little lighter in the back, and in fact, I kind of feel like this knife should be a little bit lighter overall. The, uh, the, the weight on this is fairly substantial. You're looking at 5.57 ounces on this guy, and that's, that's a fair amount, and given that this knife is pretty heavy, and given that the balance is already a little bit back heavy, I really feel like some interior milling on the back here would be a beautiful thing. It would knock the weight down overall, and it would shift the balance forward, and that, that would just be a win-win situation. So I hope that happens in future runs of this little guy. Um, next thing is that this blade, I tend to like sterile blades more than I like other, but this is almost a little bit too sterile. I look down at this and I have no idea who made it, what company it is, what steel it is. This The only thing that's printed on this entire knife is a number, which is on the inside of one of the scales underneath the backspacer. Um, you know, sterile is good, and it beats the heck out of the cold steel, just right everything on the blade approach. But this, I, I feel like this knife is just crying out to have a beautiful maker's mark printed right here, or something along those lines. Something you can look up, something you can show. It, it's just, it feels like it just was forgotten, that this wasn't printed. And so I'd like to see something on there so I know who made it, and it gives a little more continuity across all of the various designs that VDK's putting out. So it's a weird little thing, but it does kind of bug me, and I feel like this knife would be better with it. Um, and then uh, the knife is a little bit on the thicker side, particularly in the pocket. I mean, because this titanium is contoured, it gives it very nice ergonomics, but the thickness can be a little bit much. It's thicker than, for instance, your Ontario Rat Number 1, which is already a relatively thick knife. Um, it's not quite Medford Murata bad. Uh, but that doesn't take a whole lot to happen. But it is, it's relatively thick. It's thicker than your PM2, for instance. And so if you really need, if you're wearing your skinny jeans, this may not be the best choice for you. And then finally, speaking of thickness, this knife is too thick behind the edge, in my personal opinion. If we look down here at the sharpening choil, we can kind of see what's going on. This guy doesn't really narrow down all that much. This is a relatively flat grind that starts only halfway down the blade, which is weird. And uh, as a result, well, this is not God's gift to slicing. I mean, it'll cut things, absolutely. There's no huge concern there, but i just like to see this with a slightly slicier grind. And if the grind started up higher, I think it would be just in the right ballpark. So, anyways, there you go. That's the bat. It's a little too thick behind the edge for my taste. It's a little thick in the pocket. Not the end of the world. It feels like it's crying out for some mocking. The balance is a little bit far back, and the knife is a little heavy, which is just begging for some interior milling there. The price is not a huge value. Flipping is a little strange if you've got smaller hands. And then finally, the grind on this knife just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And the blade feels like it doesn't really match. On the ugly front, um, honestly, there's really, there's nothing that's just like, you screwed this up. There were design changes I could ask for. There were, you know, I'd like some milling there. But overall, there's nothing so ugly here. So uh, let's just jump into your final conclusion. Final conclusions, this is a very, very nicely done knife. There is no denial uh, that this is a well-made knife with a great handle, some really nice design touches, a really great action, and, you know, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I'm not trying to ram these knives down your throat. I gotta be fair to everything on my desk. This isn't some kind of knife-making pyramid scheme. But, you know, personally, the only real thing that rubbed me a bit raw was the thickness of the edge and the shape of the grind. Uh, so the total of a couple of new blade shapes coming down the road makes me very, very happy. And, you know, he's even talking about a slice of grind, and oh, I'm under that. 
that'll put this knife onto a whole new level and I think probably push it into Shining Gem territory. But even as it is right now, this is a very nice and very solid knife, and it's it's right on that edge of gem. Uh, the price is high, but high-end knives are a luxury good, and well, this is very, very, very well done. So if you've got some disposable income, you don't have to ask your mummy for the cash. Well, the Pioneer of the Nile is a very, very nice way to spend a little bit of your hot accumulated treasure, because unlike the pharaohs, you can't take it with you. So, uh, anyways, there you go. Sorry for all the Egypt puns, and I hope you found this review interesting and uh, that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Turns out you can't really put Nefertiti into a pun. Shame. Eh, bye now.